Have you ever felt the warmth of the Holy Spirit? The whisper of purpose coursing through your veins? We've all tasted that anointing. That divine spark that sets us apart to guide, to heal, to shepherd the flock. But here's a truth we cannot ignore, a truth as sharp as a double-edged sword. That very anointing is not a crown but a collar. It signifies not dominion but a sacred duty, a call to serve, not to be served. Welcome to the Sid Hub channel, a platform for shaping mindsets, inspiring hope, and empowering destiny. Please stay with us with your undivided spiritual attention as we present a scary vision of warning for the shepherds of God's flock, specifically in Africa. This warning was revealed in a vision to one of our cherished subscribers from South Korea, and we would like to share it with you. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. This is not a finger-pointing diatribe but a clarion call for self-reflection. This is the exact content sent to us in an email. Are we, in the pursuit of earthly gain, mistaking our influence for entitlement? Are we intoxicated by the adoration of our congregation, allowing pride to distort our mission? Have we, burdened by the weight of expectation and, strayed from the path of compassion, opting for control instead of communion? No. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our anointing is not a license to lord over but a lamp to illuminate, a staff to steady, and a voice to comfort. It's not about building empires but building bridges. It's not about collecting tithes but about collecting souls. It's not about silencing dissent but amplifying the whispers of God within each heart. Thus saith the Lord. This is a moment of reckoning, a chance to dust off our mantles and rediscover the true essence of our calling. Let us be consumed not by the privileges of leadership but by the passion of the Good Shepherd. Let our anointing serve not as a shield of authority but as a badge of humility, a reminder that we are, like our flock, mere instruments in the divine symphony. For when we walk in true humility, when power surrenders to service when ambition yields to compassion, then only will our anointing shine its brightest, guiding our congregations not to earthly thrones but to the eternal kingdom of love. This is our warning and our invitation. Embrace the anointing, yes, but remember, it is a burden, not a birthright. Let it lead you not to the pulpit but to your knees, for when we are truly humbled, that's when we rise tallest in the service of God and his people. The Lord is saying, that the incident with Elisha and the children in 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 23 to 24 which reads, From there Elisha went up to Bethel. As he was walking along the road, some boys came out of the town and jeered at him. Get out of here, baldly, they said. Get out of here, baldly. He turned around, looked at them, and called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. Then, Two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of the boys. This should serve as a stark reminder of the dangers of uncontrolled anger. Ministers of the gospel, heed this message, for it comes not with condemnation but with a clarion call to remember your true calling. The anointing you bear is not a badge of honor to be flaunted but a sacred collar, a mark of service, not supremacy. Beware the insidious trap of pride, for it can twist your shepherd's crook into a scepter of control. Remember, the crown you seek is not of gold but of thorns, a reminder of the one who served, who suffered, who loved without limit. Do not mistake your influence for entitlement or your platform for a pedestal. Your voice is meant to uplift, not to silence, to guide, not to govern. The flock you lead are not subjects to be ruled but precious souls entrusted to your care. Let not the whispers of adoration deafen you to the cries of the hurting. Your anointing is not a shield to deflect accountability but a beacon to illuminate the path of compassion. Serve, not with the arrogance of power, but with the humility of a servant's heart. Your anointing is not a license to exploit but a vow to protect. Guard your flock from wolves in sheep's clothing, from the allure of earthly riches that can eclipse the true treasure of souls. Remember, the greatest shepherd leads not with force but with sacrificial love. Do not seek comfort in the echo chamber of sycophants. Surround yourself with voices that challenge, with hearts that hold you accountable. True anointing thrives not in isolation but in the crucible of honest critique and faith. Let your anointing be a conduit, not a dam. Channel the Holy Spirit's power not to build empires but to build bridges of understanding and compassion. Let your ministry be a testament to unity, 
not a breeding ground for division. For when you forget your place as a servant when your anointing becomes a tool of self-aggrandizement, you mar the very essence of the gospel. You betray the trust of your flock and risk leading them astray from the path of righteousness. This is not a mere warning but a wake-up call. Repent of the ways you have strayed, shed the cloak of pride, and embrace the true weight of your calling. Remember, the anointing is not a crown but a collar, a constant reminder of the one who came to serve, not to be served. Only then can you be the shepherd your flock needs, leading them not to earthly thrones but to the eternal kingdom of love. Thus saith the Lord God Almighty to the men of God in Africa. Let this message resonate in your hearts, ministers of the gospel. May your anointing be a force for good, a beacon of hope, and a testament to the transformative power of love and service. Let us pray for the ministers of the gospel in Africa. Father of lights, we lift up the ministers of the gospel in Africa, those shoulders burdened with the mantle of leadership and hearts aflame with your love. Let your Holy Spirit wash over them, a refreshing rain quenching the thirst for power and igniting the fire of humility. Lord of grace, grant them wisdom like Solomon, not to rule over their flocks, but to guide them with gentle understanding. Let their tongues speak your truth, not pronouncements of dominance, but words of comfort and hope that mend broken spirits and build bridges of unity. King of compassion, fill their hearts with the boundless love you poured out on the cross. May they see beyond titles and positions, recognizing each soul as a child of God worthy of their utmost care. Grant them patience in the face of hardship, strength in the midst of adversity, and a steady hand to shepherd your people through the challenges of life. Shepherd of shepherds reminds them that their anointing is not a crown but a collar, a call to service, not a claim to superiority. Grant them the humility of Moses, leading not with arrogance but with the open ears of one who learns from the whispers of the wind and the cries of their flock. Defender of the vulnerable, protect them from the temptations of pride and self-interest. Guard their hearts from the poisonous whispers of the enemy, the lure of worldly gain, and the seductive comfort of unquestioning obedience. May they stand firm against injustice, speaking truth to power and defending the rights of the marginalized. God of unity breaks down the walls of division that separate communities and denominations. Let the anointing of your spirit flow among them, weaving together a tapestry of love and unity, where differences are celebrated, and diversity becomes a source of strength. Light of the world. May the ministers of the gospel be beacons of hope in the darkness, shining your light into the shadows of poverty, disease, and despair. Let their lives be a testament to your transformative power, leading your people toward a future filled with the promise of peace and prosperity. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. May these prayers, like whispers on the African wind, reach the hearts of your anointed servants and guide them ever closer to your perfect will. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Kindly share this message, and let's build a community of believers. Subscribe for more uplifting content, and do not hesitate to contact us if you have any prayer requests, questions, or any prophetic vision. God bless you.